Hello everyone, good afternoon, good morning, good evening and hello from whichever part of the world you're joining us from. How do you do? And welcome to another episode of Student Voice on Check, where we amplify the voices of young students leading the change in the world to inspire a movement of social impact across board from education to technology to gender equality to mental health and every aspect that involves um, change in our society. My name is Oluwada Milola Akintewe. I am a Nigerian a law student and I was one of the top 10 finalists of the inaugural Global Student Prize for the year 2021. And today I have the honor to have with me Nazali Tapetrosian who is from Armenia and she was also one of the 50 finalists for the Global Student Prize in 2021. And today we will be talking on a very, very important topic, which is climate change. It's reality and how young people are leveraging on technology to change the narrative and to tackle climate injustice and other sort of climate issues like uh, improper waste disposal, recycling in our society. Okay, uh, all right. <laughs> uh, my, my guest is here. And Hi, everyone. Hi, Hi everyone. Hello, Nancy. How are you? I'm fine, you. I'm so good. Thank you so much for joining me on this episode to talk about climate change and how young women like yourself are leveraging on technology to change the narrative and to solve the issue of climate change in society, not just in Armenia or in Nigeria, but globally. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much for joining us on this episode. And I have with me an amazing innovator, social impact activist, and change maker from Armenia, Nazali Petrosian. Please introduce yourself to the viewers. So hi, everyone. I'm Nazali. I'm a computer science student and a huge artificial intelligence enthusiast. Uh, I did different projects in different fields and also about climate change. So thank you for having me for this talk. It's my pleasure, Natalie, and thank you so much for joining us on this episode. And we are currently in March, which is the International Women History Month. And uh, some days ago, on the 7th of March, the International Women's Day was celebrated. And the particular focus of the student voice series in the month of March is to amplify young women, students who are leading change, who are inspiring their peers, who are contributing to social justice in their community and in their country and globally. And today we are talking about a very, very important topic, which is climate change. Now, you are an innovator, you are a coder, you are an app developer, and you are someone who uses technology as a means of creating social impact. Now, I am aware of some of the things you've done and the essence of today's conversation is to talk about climate change and how we can use technology to tackle the issue of climate change because really the planet is our home and we must protect her from extinction. Now, from your work, Nazali, can you just tell us how, how climate change has affected you personally as a person? Actually, climate change really affects everyone, and it might be something not obvious, but in the last three years, I noticed that the winters got really, really warm in Armenia, and I remember making snow and playing around with my sister during winter, but the last three years, we didn't really have snow, except for today, surprisingly, but... Um, it's a really small thing, but my sister's birthday is actually in January 1. And she, every day, wishes, uh, like every, on her birthday, wishes that it will snow, but we get really warm winters. So it's something small, but it's pretty noticeable. Okay, so that's the crazy thing. The effects of climate change goes across board, across countries, and 
for you in Armenia, it could be as minute the disappearance of snow, but here in Nigeria and in other farming communities where women actually till the ground, it means poverty, it means less food production because of you no know, drought, loss of water, and hardness of the soil. It also means inflation because now that the, the, yeah. the process of production has been cut down, the, the, the cost of food is going to go up because there's much demand but very, very little supply. And inflation affects people in low and rural communities with very little source of income. It cuts down their ability to afford basic amenities like food, like water, like shelter, which is very, very important. But now, instead of dwelling on the issue or on the, you know, the sad reality of what climate change is, we have young people like yourself who are using technology to change the narrative. I, in my space, I'm teaching women in my community sewing skills and how to further on sustainable fashion by recycling. So tell me, how have you used technology as a young woman in this International Women's Month? How have you used technology and the skills you have gained by yourself to tackle the issue that is climate change? So in Armenia, we have another big problem which is recycling we do not do any recycling like a really small percent of our trash is going into recycling so with a group of uh, people from my school we made an app which encouraged people to recycle their trash and we actually had a business model so for every like small bottle you go to a small amount of money and it was a cool app so it really encouraged people to start recycling their trash and we actually won the environment category of Technovation Armenia. So that's one thing. And another project I started a week ago. So the major source of like climate change are the burning of fossil fuels and electricity production. So the problem is that sometimes we produce more than that is needed. And that is why it suggests you green energy sources, but the problem with those are that they're not exactly stable. So that's why uh, around a week ago, I with a group of people started a project where we're going to create a model of a small smart city where we're going to have flexible energy use. So we're gonna have an AI agent that controls the energy production of the city based on the demand, on the other conditions like weather, whether it's cold or not. So for example, it will be more uh, sensible to use more solar energy during summer because there's more sunlight and also like hydro energy during spring. And there's more demand for energy uh, during winter because people use heating. So there are many, many factors yeah. that we can consider but in current electricity production, that is simply not considered. So and lots of energy even gets lost because not many countries have energy storages where can, they can store them. So uh, mm -hmm. that's how we're planning to solve this problem. Okay, so with this new initiative that you're designing with your team, you are creating avenues to store energy and to make sure to create avenues where energy will not be wasted and at each particular time people can have access to you know resources that they need maybe in winter or in summer especially in winter where they need more eating now this is such a wonderful wonderful initiative and it is wonderful because it features young people which is a solution centered among young people which just cements the fact that we need to give more young people the opportunity to step up to the plate of leadership to take initiative to lead change in their community and to be supported with the resources the connection and the network to make that happen and i want to applaud you for that because that is really really brilliant here in Nigeria, my team, we are taking another route to ending climate change by teaching women how to recycle. And the recycling involves sewing in the sense that they are taught how to make, you know, fashion materials basically around sustainable fashion. But then their resources are sourced from their 
home and environment, basically things that would normally contribute to environmental degradation if they were not properly disposed, like used clothes, like nylon, nylon and plastic materials and then we create it into fashion statements statement pieces like purses life bags we are you know using skills and technology to enter into a fashion market a, a billion like billions of dollar market and then to foster the message of sustainability and protection of the planet even as we you know try to do fashion and all that and we both of us are using two different mechanisms because here we're teaching people skills and these skills give them a source of income generation that helps them to make money to you know take care of their families and their children and to pay for tuition and to pay for food and all the necessary amenities but the wonderful thing is that we're using two different uh, approaches, but the end goal still remains the same, which is you know, young people synergizing for climate justice and for climate change. And I love, love, love what you're doing because really we need more technological based solutions because we are in the fourth industrial revolution and we have to move with the time. So now I have a question for this, your amazing innovation. How do you plan to get the resources how do you plan to get the resources to the entire community do you have a target audience already have you mapped out the community where you want to test drone and any of that so we're still in the development process this project is actually so i'm a part of new york academy of sciences and this is a project that we're doing in their scope and we have our mentor who is getting his PhD in smart communities. So we're at first planning to get like small model that is working and then already test data on our cities. Uh, our team is like around the world from Egypt, Romania, India. So, and also there is the Harvard's, Harvard has a data set for like community that took a community and get the energy information. So we plan to try on that real da data. And then I think we'll choose a target community and start testing there. That is awesome. Thank you so much for that information. But I want to ask about the hub that you and your team developed that helped people recycle and helped people sort their trash. Is there a hub on Play Store? And uh, if someone wants to access it, is it, is it international or is the functionality limited to only Armenia? Yeah, the, it was only limited to Armenia because we were at first collaborating with the companies, the recycling companies from Armenia. So no, it's sadly not available internationally. Oh, okay. But well, I hope that you are working towards like pushing that internationally because really we need more solutions that are geared by young people. We need the duplicity across board because climate change is not just a problem that's particular to Armenia. It is a global issue and it is about time that we take it seriously and just move away from performative politics. Now, my next question is, personally for you as a young person who is using technology to solve a particular issue, which is climate change, what other ways do you think we can, what other segments do you think we can use technology to handle in our society, aside from climate change? I think technology is the field that can be like infused everywhere from art to medicine to even social uh, our society. So for example, I remember last summer, again, with a group of people, we created a chatbot that helped people fight against depression. So uh, for example, people who are depressed, they do not usually have someone they can talk to and even if they have it can be really hard to approach that person and trust them with that so we had the chatbot that could at least uh, help the people chat with them a bit uh, for offer them resources and sometimes a bit of cheer them up uh, before they can kind of convince them to ask someone for help so that's one example but it's it's really, it's something, technology is something that can be used anywhere you want. 
That is lovely. That is lovely. And thank you so much for sharing that part because really mental health is very, very important. And mental, especially among young people, mental health is an issue that is always swept under the carpet because it's not obvious or should I say physically obvious like, you know, physical health. But nevertheless, it is of the same importance as physical health and it should be given the same attention and, and help just as physical health. Now, my next question is for young persons like yourself who are passionate about technology, who maybe have technological background uh, in science um, department studying and they are trying to use that skill to do something. Uh, looking at you as a top 50 finalist of the Global Student Prize and a young leader in your country, what kind of advice would you give to such a person who is inspired and wants to do something but they have no clarity for the particular time? I think you just need to kind of get your hands dirty and start because if you start considering, I can't do this, I do not have the resources, I, I'm not smart enough for this, you'll never get to doing it. So you just you just need to take the initiative. If you have encountered a problem or know some problem you want to solve, simply start doing it. Start thinking about it, some ideas. Even if yours is not the best one, who knows? Maybe someone else has thought of it too and wants to work with you. So simply take the initiative. No, simply take the initiative, that's the answer. And yes, the final question. Last year, you were part of the 50 finalists out of 3,500 plus nominations from 94 countries. How did that feel for you to get that kind of international recognition? And what would you like to say to someone who is trying to apply this year, but they feel like they've not done enough, in quote? I actually was... I was really surprised <laughs> I became a finalist and this might seem like uh, something interesting but I realized the extent of what I applied to after I did it so I saw, saw the prize and I was like hmm, this is something interesting why not let's apply and then three months later I get an email about informing calling me to an interview and I see the check's name and I finally kind of caught to what I applied to so I was really nervous for the interview because I finally was realizing what I've gotten myself into but I'm, I'm really glad I was the most the best thing I got out of this was new friends like new and this amazing community of people who are doing so many amazing things that I was just today I saw the nominations I simply read all of 50 finalist profiles and I was amazed every time so really it it's amazing I can I actually share the same sentiments it didn't really occur to me myself the weight of what that is until I was on that list as a top 10 finalist and even for me to be the only Nigerian on that list it was crazy and now that we are at the end of this particular live session talking about young women and leading climate change using technology to lead climate change i just want to send this message to everyone out there take your chances by applying for the global student prize 2022 circle because this is an opportunity not only to gain international recognition for your work but to have a great community of similar of young people with similar ideas of global change and to just build friends around the world i mean you're in Armenia, i'm in nigeria and we are doing this amazing amazing conversation around climate change and young people's participation especially young women's participation now go to www.globalstudentprize.org and check out the criteria to apply and to get a chance in the running for hundred thousand us dollars prize money my final question before we end this session is we are in international women's month and sometimes it looks like young people or young women there is a particular narrative that is out there that 
subject young women or undermines young women's ability to be voices to be movers and shakers of climate of solutions surrounding several topics not just climate change and you as a young person especially as a woman you are using your skills and technology as an avenue to change that narrative so if you are asked the question of what would you say to the ideology or the fallacious thoughts that young women are not capable or women are not capable of leading some particular movement around leadership around development what would you like to say to antagonize that wrongful mindset i think the main reason that even us women feel this uh, a bit not confident in ourselves is because we think that we there are really few women role models we can follow and when you see that you're alone you don't see someone who does the same you feel kind of not confident or you do not want to do it but the thing i want to say is that there are many amazing women out there that that are taking initiatives and doing things that it's really unimaginable so never feel like you're alone and that you are not capable of doing anything cuz it doesn't matter you just you can do anything you want if you put your mind to it 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 sounds a bit cliche but <laughs> it is it sounds a little bit cliche and my favorite cliche is when a woman stands up for herself indirectly she is standing up for a million other women like herself all around the world thank you so much Azeli for joining this live and thank you to everybody thank who took out time to join please help us get the message outside by liking and sharing this video and commenting and sharing it to your community and getting inspired to start something amazing something positive in your community as a change maker it could be on any topic it could be on our education health climate change the most important thing like nazali said is to take the initiative and to launch into action Thank you so much. I remain your host, Oluwada Mola Akintowe from Nigeria, and see you in the next episode. Bye. Bye.